Welcome back. This is video three of our 10 part video series. My name is Luann and I own Smart Tutoring and Test Preparation Services. This series is designed for our students who are working through the mathematical components of their aptitude tests. Uh, it's also designed for you if you're a firefighter recruit looking to pass an aptitude test or learn how to approach specific questions on an aptitude test, hit subscribe. Uh, we are here for just that. We're going to teach you what you need to know and how to go about doing it so that when you get into your test next time, you'll have a better result. All right. In this video, we're going to look at a math question, and then we're going to apply the four steps to solving word problems to the question. Um, I'm going to read the question, and then I want to talk about it, and then we're going to get into the math. So the question says, Jessica and her friends are volunteers for the Forest Service. They plant trees in areas badly burned by forest fires. One weekend, Jessica planted 318 trees, Mindy planted 306 trees, and Lisa planted 342 trees. How many more trees did Lisa plant than Jessica? Now, right away, you might look at this question and think it's a relatively easy question. And I wanted to stop there because the word easy is something that's subjective. I get the question asked to me a lot in, in, in terms of, what test is easier or is the math easy on this test? The answer is uh, no test is easier than the other. It always comes down to the recruit and what they know. So if you are comfortable with the material, you're more likely to determine that a component on a test or a test itself is easier than another. Um, if you want to get to this point, where you find things easy, you're going to have to learn the skills required to answer the questions and then practice so that you're comfortable doing that in a test. Once you get to that point, I think you'll find that things come easier to you. All right, now coming back to the math question, um, we're going to work through the four steps. The first step in how to solve a word problem is to identify what you know out of that word problem. And in an aptitude test, you're going to be given mixed math. So it's important for you to identify the type of math that you're looking at first and then decide how you're going to approach it. One way you're going to determine the type of math is to look at your numbers. You can see here that you're working with 318, 306, and 342. Those are all whole numbers. So you're working with whole numbers. If you were working with decimals, you would see decimals. If you were working with fractions, you would see fractions. Rate and proportion, you would see a rate. Okay, so it's very clear what kind of math you're being given in a question. You just have to be able to pull it out from the information that's given to you. Start with the numbers. Okay, so in terms of what you know, we have um, whole numbers. And then you're going to look at, let's see, I'm just going to write whole numbers. All right. Um, next up, you're going to take a look at the operations that are involved. So out of your operations, you have adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. You could be asked to do uh, one of those things or a combination of those things. In this case, uh, if you see how many more. How many more means to subtract. If you are one of my students, you will have already known that because I teach students the words that go with the specific operation. So when you see how many more, you know that means to subtract. All right, so now we have enough information in terms of what we're doing and what we need to do. We know we're working with whole numbers. We know we need to subtract them. The last thing I want you to do before stepping out of the what do you know stage is to identify what you're asked to do. What's the question asking you to do? So it, it's asking how many more trees did Lisa plant than Jessica? Okay, so we want to know how many more trees Lisa has. All right, so now you're going to move into the second step. And this is where you start to plan to solve the problem. If you are studying, I would recommend writing the steps out in terms of how you need to do this. I recommend this because oftentimes recruits only practice math by calculating numbers. 
And that's excellent. You need to do that too, but you also have to remember the steps to solve the word problems. So my students, I ask them to write um, in their notebooks how to do everything. So in this case, it would be how to um, subtract uh, one number from the other or multiple digits. In my plan, I would include how to draw up the numbers on the paper. So in this case, you want to put the top number, sorry, the, the largest number on the top and then right align those numbers. And then from there, you can go ahead and subtract. So plan to solve the problem. Um, I'm just gonna put set up problem. Make sure that when you're writing your math, it's clean in terms of you can see the numbers and they're lined up properly. Also make sure that when you do write the numbers, you give enough room in between the numbers to manipulate around them if you need to. I'm guilty for not doing that. That's why I say make sure you do it. And then from here, you're going to subtract. All right, once you know what you need to do, you're going to go ahead into the third pro uh, stage of the problem, which is to solve the problem. So here is where you're doing your math. Now, Lisa has 342 trees. 342. And how many trees does Jessica have? 318. All right, so notice that I have the larger number on top and that my numbers are right aligned. That's important, okay? Now from here, you're going to do the subtraction. I'm going to show you how to do the subtraction. If you have difficulty in subtraction, it's likely with regrouping, which means borrowing numbers. That's why I'm going to show you how to do this because if you're challenged in subtraction, it's likely here. So you're going to start from the right hand side and you're going to subtract moving to the left. In this case, you're trying to subtract eight from two and you cannot do that because eight is bigger than two. You're going to borrow from the four. So cross that four out, make a three because you're leaving it with three. And then the group that you borrow becomes a group of 10 and you add that to the two to make 12. All right, so now we have 12 minus eight, that is four. Put the answer down below the numbers that you're subtracting and then move on. Uh, three minus one is two, and then three from three is zero. So your answer is 24, all right? Now you're going to move on to the evaluation stage. Here you're going to select the answer that is the correct answer of the best of the four there. So you've got um, 24 C, is your answer. Now, if you did this wrong, let's say you did the math and you, you didn't come up with the right answer and you can't find it on the evaluation sheet, there are two things that you can do to possibly get that mark on a test. The first thing is if you don't get the answer, go back to the question and read the question again. Make sure that um, you identify what you're being asked to do because oftentimes we forget a last step. So if we're um, back on the question, it brings that to light. Also, while you're looking at the question, make sure that you're using the right numbers. Um, I had to double check Lisa's numbers and Jessica's numbers. You watched me do that because Mindy also has numbers in that question. So go back and make sure you're using the right numbers and also make sure that the numbers are correct. Sometimes I see students um, pull a number from a question but write it down wrong and then they get the math wrong because they're using the wrong numbers. So double check the question to see if you can pull out your errors. And then if you can obviously go back, rework the math, and then you should be able to get the right answer. That's the difference between um, one mark and, and a, like a fail essentially, right? So take the time to write your workout properly so that you can go back and check it if you need to, um, and then get that mark and move forward in your testing. All right, that's a lot of information in one short video. We did cover, um, we covered a lot. We covered, you know, what's easy and what's not. And we looked at nothing is easy unless you work at it, okay? We looked at um, 
how to solve word problems using a four-step framework that I teach in smart tutoring. And then we also uh, talked about what you could do in a fire test if you could not come up with the answer on your own. Two things you could quickly do there to potentially uh, regain that mark and move forward in a test. All right. Thank you so much. If you're still watching, I do appreciate it. Hit subscribe because we are going to be producing more how-to videos in terms of how to answer different types of firefighter test uh, questions.